Okay, okay, let's do some math for fun. This is a classic question for you guys. We are going to see which set has more elements. The first set is n, namely the set of all the natural numbers, and we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and so on, so on, so on. And for the second set, as you can see, we have z, namely the set of all the integers. And of course, we have all the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 right here already. And we also have the negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so on, so on, so on over there as well. So, hmm, wouldn't this just be obvious that because z contains 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, so on, so on right here already, and n does not have these numbers, so of course, z has more elements, isn't it? No. <laughs> the answer to this question is, in fact, they have the same amount of elements. And technically, we'll say they have the same cardinality. Cardinality means the number of elements in a set. And the idea here is that, keep in mind, you see, both of them are infinite sets, and infinity is tricky. So we have to deal with infinity, you know, carefully. They do have the same number of elements. And let me just show you guys how we are going to reason this out. And in the next video, I'll show you guys the mathematical proof of the things that I'm about to show you. Okay, here is a prep work for you guys. Suppose I give you guys some dots right here, some dots in black, and then I will give you guys some red dots. And let me ask you, which one has more? The black dots or the red dots? I know, you guys will just tell me, hey, the red dots. And if I ask you why, Maybe you'll just say, because we have four red dots and we only have three black dots, so four is bigger than three, of course, right? So we have more red dots than black dots. Good. But what if we cannot count? We cannot use numbers. In that case, how can you convince anyone that we do have more red dots than black dots? Well, here's a proposal for you guys. Check this out. Can we just connect the first black dot and then the first red dot like this? And I don't even need to say first, I can just draw the connection like that, right? Okay, good. So we pair them up. And then we are going to pair this up. That's good. And I will pair this and that up, just to be slightly more creative. And you see, we have used all the black dots already, but we have one more red dot right here. Like this one is a leftover. We have the leftover right here. So because of that, we can see that we have more red dots than black dots by drawing this kind of connection. And that's exactly what we'll do. If we can make a connection between the elements right here for the first set and the elements for the second set, if we can just connect them, then they do have the same number of elements. And that's called the one-to-one -one correspondence. We can also say we need to find a bijection from one to the other. So that's the idea right here. And it's almost like Z has twice as many as elements as the first one, because this is like the repeat of that. Hmm, because I mentioned twice that this is about like half. Maybe let's see how we can break down the set of the natural numbers into like two categories. And as we all know, when we have a number, if you look at just the past, the whole numbers, and also zero right there, it's either even or odd. That's how we can categorize them into like two parts, right? Good. And in the meantime, if we look at Z, we can also break them into two parts as positive or negative. I know we have the zero, it's not negative, it's positive, but I think that's a good start. Now, let me just organize the numbers in the following way. First of all, let me just put down n, and I will write down the numbers. Now, I will do the same. Let's put down the numbers from z. But to do so, we have to do it carefully. Zero is not odd. Well, sorry, zero is not odd. Yes, that's right. I, want, I meant to say zero is not positive, it's not negative, but I will put down zero right here anyway. Anyway, the idea, as we mentioned earlier, we want to just look at all the even numbers from n first. So the goal is, I want to just kind of draw a connection between the even numbers to the numbers from z, right? Okay. Huh. You see, if I have all the even numbers right here, if we divide it by 2, what will happen? Well, 2 divided by 2 will be 1. 4 divided by 2 will be 3. 4 divided by 2 will be 2. 6 divided by 2 will be 3. And wouldn't that just be the right-hand side right here? Yes. So I can, of course, put down 1, 2, 3. And of course, this right here will keep on going forever. That's good. So now we have put down all these numbers right here already. Now we just have to fill in 
the gap with the negative integers. Okay, it's time for the formula for the rule. Okay, this is how we are going to write this slightly more formally, okay? First of all, we are going to call the formula, the function, or just give a name. I'm just, of course, the thing to be f right here. And you put down two columns, and you can say, if you want to go from n to c, then you go like this, n and draw arrow to z. Meaning that we are going to assign all the elements from n, and we'll map them to the elements in z, right? Okay. Hmm. So that's just how you define the function and all that. Now it's time for us to write down the formula. I will, of course, say f and then the input. Let me just use little n for the elements from n, capital N, like this n. Anyway, here we go. All right, look at all the even numbers divided by 2. That's the first piece of the formula that we need. So I need to have n over 2. And we do this if n is even. OK, now the question is, how can we go from the odds, though, to this? So how can we go from 1 to negative 1? How can we go from 3 to negative 2? How can we go from 5 to negative 3? Hmm. Well, check this out. This is almost like this. If I can have 5 and add 1 to it, divided by 2, that would be 3. And then I just need to multiply by negative. That's it. right? So that's pretty good. So to write down the formula, start with the input, which is n. We add 1 to it, and we are going to multiply by negative and divide it by 2. That's it. So take a look. What's the next number? 7, right? And it should map to negative 4. When 7 is up, we will have to do this one. 7 plus 1 is 8. Multiply by negative is negative 8. Divided by 2 is negative 4. So this is good. And we do this if n is odd. So that's it. This is how we define the function to go from one set to the other. And in fact, this right here is a bijection, meaning that you can just draw the arrow like both ways, meaning that it has an inverse. Meaning that you can show mathematically by the using definitions that this function is one to one and onto. And I will do that for you guys in the next video. I'll just put this down right here. This is in fact a bijection. Okay, if you also like to have fun while learning math, then I will highly recommend you guys to check out Brilliant Work. Brilliant Work is a math and science website that offers a lot of interesting courses. As you guys can see, they have over 50 interactive courses, and they have been adding a lot of new courses lately. Let me show you guys one that I really, really like. It's the differential equation 2. This right here is so great, especially a lot of you guys have been asking me about differential equations. So you guys can check this out because they have a lot of real life examples and a lot of animations that you guys can learn from. So as you can see right here, we have this little challenge, 2D versus 3D waves, and you guys can read this right here. And you can continue, see the animations here, and they will make you think because you have to answer these questions along the way after you finish reading this. And you can also use the link blendonwork slash blackpen redpen because this way you guys can get a 20% off discount and that way you guys can get access to all of their interesting and challenging courses. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for checking out blendonwork. When I first saw this, it was like really mind bothering because seriously, it seems like we have twice as many numbers right here than that. But the truth is, to dealing with infinity, we have to be super careful and all that good things. It's great, man.